This is an update to a previous video we made on the topic. And let's just say it was needed. <laughs> if you've seen the video, you know what I'm talking about. My name is Aaliyah and the goal with this channel is to make all things Mexico sound not so foreign to foreigners in Mexico. So whether you're just visiting Mexico, passing through, or establishing roots, join the journey and let's get mixed in Mexico. So to begin, there are three legal ways for a foreigner to reside in Mexico. You can be a temporary resident, a permanent resident, or a citizen of Mexico. And generally you have to be a resident before becoming a citizen. Who qualifies to be a temporary or permanent resident of Mexico? There are a number of things that can qualify an individual, but mainly four things. Education, family ties, employment, and or financial solvency. How do you get the process started? Typically, it's a two-step process. Step one starts at the Mexican consulate office abroad, and then step two completes when you come to Mexico here and finish the process at the INM office. I'll make a future video on the requirements for each step of the process and what documentation is required. If you've seen my previous video, you know that there are certain individuals who qualify through family ties to actually skip step one of the process at the consulate abroad all together and jump straight to step two at the INM office here in Mexico. If you can take advantage of that provision, I'd absolutely say just do it. Now let's take a look at both of those residency options, what they are and the pros and cons of each. First up, temporary residency. Temporary residency is a form of residency in Mexico that legally allows an individual to live for a minimum of one year in the country. How many years will you be granted? That number is dependent on the INM official that you may get at the INM office. But how you know how many years you're granted is the date of expiration on your residency card, also known as the fecha de vencimiento. And it is important to know that that date is in the format of day, month, and then year. So if your day says 10-3-2024, just know that your residency will expire on March 10th, 2024. So do not try to renew your residency on the 3rd of October. Generally speaking, on the first go around with INM, you'll be given one year to start. And then after you renew, you will then be given the option to renew for up to three years. And after four years of temporary residency status, you qualify for permanent residency status, which we'll talk more about later in this video. Are there any advantages of holding temporary residency status in Mexico? While your temporary residency card is valid, you can enter and exit the country as many times as you want without the 180 day cap that tourists are usually limited to. You can participate in the Mexican public health care system, which is free. You can temporarily import household items duty free. You can temporarily import a vehicle. You can get a local driver's license and all the discounts that come with it, big plus. You can buy a car and legally register it here. You can get certain local bank accounts. And after two to four years as a temporary resident, you can then go on to qualify for permanent residency status. Are there any challenges to temporary residency status in Mexico? One, meeting the financial requirements first to get the temporary residency status. Two, getting all the paperwork that that entails, whether that's the apostille document, the translations of the documents, Everything is in Spanish. If you don't speak Spanish, that could be a downside for you, especially with step two of the process. You can't avoid dealing with Mexican government officials, and it could prove frustrating in some instances. And as a temporary resident of Mexico, you will still have to renew with the INM office once your temporary residency card is approaching expiration date, which means filling out paperwork, going to the same INM office, potentially having the same frustrations, making the copies, and paying the fees. Next stop permanent residency. <laughs> Those who qualify for this route typically have held temporary residency status for at least four years in the country. Although there is an arrangement that if you're married to a Mexican citizen, <laughs> you can apply for permanent residency status after two years of being a temporary resident. You might also skip temporary residency status altogether and jump straight to permanent residency status if you have certain circumstances and meet a higher financial requirement. Are there any advantages to being a permanent resident of Mexico? You have all the same benefits as the temporary resident, but in addition, now if you're a permanent resident of Mexico, you may now qualify for the senior discount card if you're over the age of 60. You can also get certain bank accounts that temporary residents aren't allowed to get. And now that you're a permanent resident of Mexico, you no longer have to renew every year with the INM office unless you're a minor, of course. And after two to five years as a permanent resident of Mexico, you can then qualify to become a naturalized citizen. Are there any challenges to being a permanent resident of Mexico? The same as with temporary residency, 
But now, although you no longer have to renew every year with INM office, you will still have to keep them informed of changes, whether it be changes to your address, marital status, civil status, or the like. And lastly, if you love Mexico so much, you can then become a naturalized citizen of Mexico. If you haven't already, check out a previous video we made on the subject for routes to citizenship. I cover everything that you need to know in order to become a naturalized citizen of Mexico. Those individuals who qualify for this route have held temporary or permanent residency status for at least two to five years, passed the Mexican citizenship exam, as well as resided physically in the country of Mexico for a certain amount of time prior to taking the exam. Are there any advantages to being a naturalized citizen of Mexico? Similar to temporary and permanent residency, but in addition, you now have a certain ease of travel. One, you no longer need to inform INM of any changes to your address, marital status, civil status, you're a free agent, kind of. You no longer need to inform INM when you're entering or exiting the country via the FMM form. And if you aren't familiar with that form, check out a previous video we did on this subject. It talks about the procedures that temporary and permanent residents need to go through in order to exit and re-enter Mexico. Another ease of travel includes skipping the line that tourists and sometimes residents have to go through and going straight to the Mexican national lines, which takes a lot of time off of your travel. Another travel perk would be that for certain countries, specifically in Central, Latin, and South America, Mexican nationals won't need a visa. And last but not least, I'm sure there are many others, but two other ones that I can think of at the moment are one, you can inherit property, but two, as a Mexican national, you can buy property in the restricted zone. Technically, foreigners can buy property within the restricted zone, but it has to be with a Mexican corporation or bank trust. But as a Mexican national, you can buy it straight out, which I might add, can save you a lot of money in the long run. Are there any challenges to being a naturalized Mexican citizen? Tomato, tomato. A few that I can think of are, you can no longer drive a foreign plated car. Two, you can't be out of the country for five years continuously or in a row, or your citizenship can be revoked. And three, as a Mexican national, you are subject to the Mexican laws and legal or justice system, which means you can no longer seek protection or asylum from your home country's embassy or consulate. And that does sound scary, but it doesn't have to be. Just obey the laws and stay out of trouble and you'll do just fine. And I will say a potential con for all three options is that it could get particularly expensive along each step of the way if you have to hire a Mexican immigration specialist or lawyer. Personally, my husband and I didn't hire an immigration specialist. We handled all the paperwork on our own, so it is possible. And hopefully if you stick around with the channel and that's your goal, you'll be able to too.